Hey guys, in my hands is the Raspberry Pi 400. Yes, it looks like a standard keyboard, but there's a lot more to this because there's a full Raspberry Pi built right in. So let's take a look at the Raspberry Pi 400. Raspberry Pi computers have never been that huge. Here's a Raspberry Pi 2. Now these devices are excellent for tinkering, going ahead, trying out different operating systems, making all kinds of devices with such a tiny and affordable device. Now there's the Raspberry Pi 400, which builds the whole thing into a keyboard. This is the first time they've done this. Now normally you can get accessories and build cases for that kind of stuff, the old Raspberry Pi, but this makes it very easy to jump into the Raspberry Pi world. So $70 gets you the keyboard and the computer built in. That's what you get. But if you're willing to spend a little extra, $30 more, you get the full kit. That includes a micro SD card that's preloaded with Raspberry Pi OS. It also comes with the official Raspberry Pi mouse, matching color scheme with a kind of a short cord you also get the Raspberry Pi official USB-C power supply that is included. You get a micro HDMI cable to regular HDMI cable. Plus you get this fantastic all color book called the official Raspberry Pi beginner's guide. Now this book tells you how to set up the Raspberry Pi, install an operating system, start it up as a fully functional computer. You can start coding projects. This is about 250 pages, like I said, full color. And why would you want a book? I know that seems quaint, but the thing is, let's say you're having issues with your Raspberry Pi. It's a lot easier to diagnose them on paper if you've got no internet access on your Raspberry Pi 400. So what I wanna do is fire up the Raspberry Pi 400, hook it up, explain to you how it runs. And again, I want you to realize something. It's a $70 computer. That is hard to argue with. So let's plug it in and show you how it works. Plugging in the power. Here we have the Raspberry Pi loading up. It doesn't take that long to boot up. I'll give it that. So it's pretty quick. And we're waiting for it, waiting for it to load. Okay, here we have the Raspberry Pi OS desktop. Now I'm gonna click on the top here. You can see a very simple menu, very reminiscent of Windows in the past. And also this is a version of Linux. So if you don't know anything about Linux, don't worry about it. Everything's labeled really simple. Sometimes maybe a little too simple. Sometimes it's hard to find certain settings. You might have to dig around. Not the biggest fan of that, but then again, this is built for you to tinker. So if you don't want to tinker with a device, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to get a Raspberry Pi. You might want to get something else, but let's talk about just doing basic things like getting online. We'll go to internet. We have the Chromium web browser, which is built on Chromium. That's the same engine that powers Chrome and now Microsoft Edge. Now I'm going to go to a site like YouTube and I'm going to show you how long it takes to load up. Right now, this computer is hooked up via Wi-Fi. So you can see here, it's taking a couple of seconds for it to load. Let's go ahead and play a video directly there. Let's take a look at this iPhone 12 Pro Max thing. I hear that's what the kids like. All right, so that's running okay. And while that's loading, I'm going to look at a document. I'm going to click there. I'm going to go to the office. There's pre-built in. There's a preloaded version of an open office called LibreOffice. I'm going to go to Writer. That's the equivalent of Microsoft Word or any other word processor. You can see already that YouTube's having a little bit of issues when it comes to running video. It looks like we're losing some frames. So we're opening up LibreOffice Writer. I have noticed a delay when it comes to Google Docs. So that's why I'm using LibreOffice Writer because I've noticed it's a lot faster even when you're running something like a YouTube video on the side. So let's go ahead. I am testing the Raspberry Pi 400. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So noticing right away the keyboard is responsive. I do like it. I think it's a little shallow in the travel. It's it's sturdy. There's no real flex to the actual device. So when you're using it, you're not like feeling like it's going to fall apart on you. You can see in this image here how how it looks with all the wires coming out. And let's go back to that USB-C that it's power only. So if you wanted to hook up something like a USB-C dock, something like this that has everything attached by one cable, you're not going to be able to do that. But then again, the Raspberry Pi 400 has tons of ports. So you're not really wanting for that. So let's go back to typing. Typing is the most exciting part of the video. I know this 
from comments. So if we take a look on the left, we still have a, a nice playback, which isn't too shabby at all, actually. So that's not bad. I have noticed with 4K videos, it seems to kind of lose a lot of frames, even though it's capable of playing those videos back. The frame rate, not spectacular. I don't recommend multitasking with this kind of device. So what is this computer for? Who is this for? If you need a spare device, if you need something to write on, or if you need to browse on something, this is fantastic. If you want to set up all kinds of ways to learn how to program, that's something this thing can do. If you want a device where you can just change operating systems just by changing the micro SD card, this is it. You can do that with the Raspberry Pi 400, which is a fantastic way to tinker and learn with lots of different operating systems and methods of programming without necessarily worrying about is your other laptop safe? Is, are your kids gonna bust it? Or like, are you gonna break something that's really important with your machine because you were testing out all kinds of environments? This is, again, really hard to beat. There are some complaints that I have about it. Performance, it's a, look, it's a little pokey, okay? Running videos don't does not work super well when it comes to doing multitasking. It's not great at that, but I don't know why you'd expect a machine that costs $70 or $100 with all the other pieces to work that great. All that being said, it's a fantastic device. I love this little Raspberry Pi 400. I think, you know, I want to hook it up to my television, just keep it there so I can be able to pull up a full browser if I need to. Let's say there's some kind of web series I really enjoy, but there's no current app or anything. Hooking this up directly is really quick, really easy. Uh, yes, you'd have to be attached and tethered with an HDMI cable, but think I can make that sacrifice or I can be wacky and attach a Bluetooth keyboard to this keyboard. So, you know, if you just think of it as a housing, it's, it's pretty nice. Let's take a look at the, look at that slimness on the sides. On the side, as I twist the cables, you can see there's a bit of venting ports there. And you know, I will say on a desktop, it fits at a really nice angle. So if you take a look at this device, you'll notice something. There is no headphone jack. So if you want to do audio out, what the Raspberry Pi 400 does by default is send the audio out through the HDMI cable. That means if you hook it up to a TV, you're fine. But if you use a monitor, you won't be able to hear anything. So this was kind of a pain in the neck to work with. I tried it with Bluetooth audio, I had problems with that. I tried it with a USB interface, I had a problem with that. It turns out that the fix was over at Ars Technica. Those guys are great and geniuses. Check them out if you get a chance. So how do I fix the audio output such that it works with a USB interface? or a Bluetooth set of headphones, here's the deal. You have to right click the speaker, go to audio outputs, pick the one you want. I'm gonna say, let's say Sound Bud Slim, that's my headphones. Then I had to restart the machine. From then on in, all the audio worked with that pair of headphones. Why? I don't know. At one point the audio was working in VLC, it was not working in Chromium. This was a bit of a, of a head scratcher at the time, but then again, these are kinds of things that you might run into when you're working on a Raspberry Pi. That's not a real problem, but if you really want things to be turnkey, this might not be the exact solution. But then again, that could be a fault of the Raspberry Pi OS because if you look around Raspberry Pi OS, like I said, there's not a heck of a lot to look at. Programming, education, office. If you look at the accessories, not a lot of help there. The help itself tells you about the actual literature for you and the preferences are a little bit on the light side. So if you're looking for like a control panel or something like a system preferences like you would have on a Mac, not exactly the same kind of setup here. Again, if you don't like this operating system, you can always go ahead and install another one. This has been the Raspberry Pi 400, which I think is fantastic. And I've been Aya Zaktar, and I'll see you online.